So the first video here is Michael Carbajal in against Pedro Espinoza. It is Carbajal's fourth pro fight and worth a look because you can see how advanced Carbajal already is in the beginning stages of his career. Uh, this is what a can't-miss prospect looked like back in the day. A second clip is Johnny Tapia in against Rolando Bohol. Uh, this is Tapia in his prime. He's two months off an exciting win over Henry Martinez, and his team is just trying to keep him occupied with stay-busy fights. Uh, his opponent here is Rolando Bohol, who is a longtime veteran of the sport, a one-time flyweight champion who is past his prime, but still thought to be durable. So we're underway. Right away, a good left hook by Michael Carbajal. You saw him move right into the rope stand. This is only a 17-foot ring. And in the amateurs, Michael Carbajal, I guarantee you, never fought in a 17-foot ring. Very, very small. There, Carbajal got called with a punch from Espinosa. And Pedro Espinosa, a totally unknown fighter to Carbajal and his people. They've not seen him fight before. A little wild in his approaches. You see Espinosa lunging in. Michael Carbajal, a sophisticated fighter in the ring. And Alex, we've seen him Ooh. before get hurt and not, not really be surprised by it. Able to counter and down with a solid left. The left hook from Carbajal puts Espinosa down. He gets up saying he's fine. I'm sure Al Munoz will let this continue, and he does. just picking his shots from the outside. First solid punch he landed, dropped Espinoza. That right from Carbajal got between the gloves. The left flicks in as well. Oh, and that right staggered Espinoza. Left jab from Espinoza connected. But the solid punches certainly are the ones being landed by Michael Carbajal in the white trunk. You can't draw too many conclusions from this kind of a fight because obviously Carbajal is very, very superior. The one thing that might bother you is he is getting hit with more punches. Oh, and that left to the chin. And Espinosa is up again, but what a shot he took to the chin. A roundhouse left, and we continue. Still in round one. Remember, the three knockdown rule is not in effect. Oh, and a wild punch from Espinosa. And this oh. is it. That's it. Al Munoz is stopping the fight. The three knockdown rule was not in effect, but Al Munoz saying Espinosa no longer in position to defend himself. Alex, I can't argue with the call stopping him. No, no, not at all. And if Michael Carball is looking to sit down on his punches more. It's difficult to judge because uh, Espinosa went down so often whether it was bad Espinosa or good Carbajal, but he definitely was accurate and did not let his man get off the hook and dropped him. Took him out. Don't forget the main reason. Look at some of the shots that Carbajal puts on Espinosa. This is the first knockdown. Watch the left. Body shot doubles with it. Comes right up on top. And he stunned Espinosa there, dropped him. He wasn't hurt at that point. One more knockdown in between. This is the final knockdown. The right hand, straight right, drives Espinosa back. The ropes keep him up. The right again. Again, Espinosa fighting to stay up. He was brave. He just was way, way outclassed. And then the left put him down. And Al Munoz, you see right there, waved off the fight. That was it. And there is Michael Carbajal, who moves his professional record now to 4-0 oh, with his hair. first round knockout. <laughs> and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with turquoise trim, weighing 116 and one-half pounds. From Albuquerque, New Mexico, he brings an undefeated record of 27-0 oh, with one goal, 17 KOs, and he currently holds the WBO Super Flyweight title, title not on the line tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the baby-faced assassin, the undefeated WBO Super Flyweight Championship of the World, Johnny Tapia.
this crowd. Let's go now to the AutoZone keys to victory and find out how they might be able to win this match. Okay, for Johnny Tappy, the double left hooks against the southpaw style. Avoid the letdown. This is not a title fight. He still must win impressively. For Ball Hall, use the good body shots. He needs to hang on the inside. He's not a power puncher, but he must try to smother. Boxing is a sport now where the marketability seems to rest on every single fight. People forget what you did even the day before yesterday. Well, Johnny Tappy is getting right after Ball Hall. Cappy had told us today, Dave, that he wanted to be very careful about the, uh, clashes of heads as he leaned in with Ball Hall. Yeah, he certainly doesn't want to lose any potential fights coming up, and he also leans forward a little bit with his head as well, and uh, that almost leads to an inevitable clash somewhere down the line. And it happened already. Maybe sooner than later. Johnny Tapia has the skills to do well against the lefty. He has one of the best double left hooks in boxing. And good straight right hand and knows how to step to his left because that's what you have to do against the lefty. And half the step and he gets right in on Ball Hall here. Beautiful left hook by Tapia and right hands and Rolando Ball Hall back against the ropes. Tapia is one of the hardest punchers at this weight. There was a left hook. Big right to the side, and he caught one on the return. We saw Bo Hold go 10 rounds with Junior Jones back in 1991 when Jones was knocking everybody out. Though more recently, he lost to Orlando Canizales, the IBF uh, Bantamweight champion, as he went up in weight, got knocked out in five rounds. He just took a big right hand from Tapia. And at what point in his training are we catching him? Always a good question. Yeah, people train in the gym, but if there's not a fight right in front of them, the intensity level is not the same. And he took this fight on very short notice, just about a week. Well, this has been both uh, an explosive round of times for Johnny Tapia and a measured round. Looking for a spot to place the right hand there. Neglecting the left hook to the body and the head. And right now he wants to show Paul Hall everything. Johnny Tapia comes out for round two, as does his opponent, Rolando Bohal. We want to mention this early on. The Tapia group, Paul Chavez and Johnny, want to send their best wishes out to John Cabrera, a delightful man, uh, one of the nicest guys in boxing who has helped him in his matchmaker, and he is ailing, and uh, we all send our best wishes to him. And his, uh, his guy, Johnny Tapia, is showing him why he won the WBO championship. He is wailing away against Bohal and then roughing him up a little bit. And so far, showing the challenge of a, a hunter of a challenger, 32 to 7. In many non-title fights, we have seen champions come in, go through the motions, get a decision. Johnny Tapia has come out as if his title was on the line in this fight. Since his absence from boxing for almost four years due to substance abuse and all the things that were chronicled in the story that Dave did for you, Johnny Tappy has come back with a vengeance. He's a different fighter. He doesn't know any gear, but fast in the ring now. He goes after everybody. Uh, he went to the top of the mountain in his last fight, and he's right about at that level here. Johnny Tappy, ultimate blue card. He really is, and he went from being a boxer to a really a slugger. He had the textbook style of jabbing from the outside, but he has leaned in, got more power on his shots, and there's some speed. And he gets some serious leverage on that left hook. Now, for Rolando Bajal in here, Rolando is trying to find a home for his right hook over the hook of Tapia, but it's just not working. What happened there? Something, he injured himself. Bajal just must have, I don't know what he fell down from. But he got counted. He didn't even get hit, did he? No, he didn't. Wasn't even near being hit, but there might, might be some injury here. I have well, no, he just doesn't want to fight at this point. I have never seen that. Unless I'm missing my bet, there wasn't even a punch thrown. 
That is weird. Rolando Bohol is not a Hammond Edgar. He's a guy who will come to fight. He's been in against champions. He falls down again. Last time he got hit, but he's resigned. He does not want to be here. His training may not have been the best. Johnny Tapia is all over him. And in his case, he decided in this fight he did not want to go on. That was mysterious to me. Johnny Tapia, you look at him, he's a happy guy. He was fighting very well in this match. No, make no mistake about that. And he wins it by a TKO in the second round. But in my mind, under some odd circumstances. Certainly nothing... Uh, that has to do with him. Well, I think the replay of that first knockdown should be very interesting and quite revealing about what happened. He was okay. not hit. And let me let okay. me say this about Rolando Bajal. Like We've Go seen ahead. him before. Right. Let's listen in. Maybe we get some uh, some inkling of what's going on in there. Let's see what went on before that knockdown. Here's Tapia coming in. Good right hand. The left hooks, digging downstairs. Nothing looks like it's overly impressive. I mean, there's good shots here. These are not knockdown shots yet. Left hook to the body now. Bohol trying to hold on, punching his way out of it. Coming forward. Good eyes in the back. Still wants to get something going here. Right. Misses with a shot. Right now, he's not been hit. This is just before the first knockdown. He got hit with a good left hook there, but falls down. The invisible man came in and got him. Unless that was simply a delayed reaction to the left hook that landed. And the second knockdown here, Bohol has taken too much. And of course, you don't give Johnny Tapia this kind of an opening. Strong right hand, he'll come in with the left hook. And he's just putting everything on Bohol right now. The left hook's digging him, and that one downstairs was a telling blow. That was happening throughout the entire second round, also the uh, earlier round in the fight. Here's a theory, and maybe we'll even have a chance to ask Rolando Bohol. That left hook that landed before that was a very hard left hook, and it... The pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico, the baby-faced assassin. He's the WBO super flyweight champion of the world, Johnny.